بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ينفعنا يا رب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ما شاء الله it is a beautiful occasion to be back here in person at the ICNACON 2022. Such an excitement it is to be in this presence. In these moments in where we are gathered, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and building the sense of community. One of the ayat of the Quran that we reflect very often and because this is the theme of this convention is building a just society. Every single week, when the khatib finishes the khutbah and gets down from the mimbar, one of the verses that the khatib reads, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us to be just. Justice is a hallmark of our deen and our Islam. But today, we only associate justice in certain situations. But this entire deen is justice. Justice with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ Allah has placed the scales. And these scales, Allah wants it to be even. He wants the scales and the balance to be even. وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ أَلَّا تَطْغَوْ فِي الْمِيزَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to be extreme in one end over the other. So Allah says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. Allah commands us to be just. But our understanding of justice today, look around us. Some people today have amassed wealth. If you were to stack it up from this earth all the way to the moon, you could come back a hundred times while others don't have food to eat. Is that justice? Is that the justice that Allah wants us to command and to hold? There are people today that sleep with no food to eat. People that don't have a home and a shelter while we are guaranteed those privileges. Justice that Allah wants is us to make sure that every single person has access to these rights. The right to a shelter, the right to find clean water to drink, the right to find access to health care, the right to be able to live a life of dignity. This is what Allah commands us to do. So when we speak of charity, we're not just talking about how to be generous and give your money and just keep giving your money. You are spending your money and your wealth in order to build a just society. You are giving a part of you because you want to see others be dignified in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one passage of the Quran, He describes the quality of the Sahaba. And what does He say? Allah describes this quality of the people. And what does he say about them? They feed others. The scholars, they disagree on this hat. What, what does this hat that you see at the end of the sentence, who is it referring to? Some scholars they say it refers to Allah. So they feed others out of their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another interpretation is that they feed others out of the love for the food that they have also. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes And he gave of his wealth even though that wealth was dear to him. Allah says, you will never attain piety, you will never attain the true righteousness that Allah wants from you until you spend that which you love. Sometimes, for certain people, it's hard to rationalize their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's hard to quantify how do you love Allah. And part of loving Allah is giving up the things that you're attached to. That is showing, and that's what the Prophet ﷺ in one hadith he says, as to burhan. He said, charity and the wealth that you spend is a manifestation of one's iman. How do you exemplify your iman in this world? It is easy to observe the salah. It is easy to pray at night because this is only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an action that is required of you. And you're only giving of something that brings a return to you in this worldly life. When you pray salah and you go in prostration, and if you just reflect for a moment in that position, the closest that you are to Allah is that moment when you place your forehead on the ground and then you say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. That moment when you're engaged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is for you. It's not for Allah. It is for you. It is for your own benefit. You find tranquility and peace and comfort and itma'inan of the heart at that moment. But when you give charity, when you take something that you worked for and you give it out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, now you have shown your true love for me, your true faith in me, because Allah has attached certain type of blessings to the charities that we give. Now I want us to reflect back because we have heard so much hadith and so much verses in relation to giving charity. But I'll leave you with this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. One time a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Which charity? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, which charity in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the most reward? Now many of you would think that that charity might be to give during Ramadan on the 27th night, it might be to give charity on the, you know, the last 10, the, the 10 days of the Hijjah or the day of Arafah. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said, no, it's none of these things. The best charity that one can give is in four situations. And I want you to reflect this with me. He said, وَأَنْتَ وَأَنْتَ صَحِيحٌ شَحِيحٌ he said it is to give charity when you are sahih. Physically, you are healthy. Say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah has given me so much. Say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We are healthy. He said sahihun. Shahih. You are desirous of that wealth. You have this attachment to this wealth. I worked for it, it's mine. This is what we are taught in a capitalist society. It's mine, it belongs to me, I worked for it. How can you take my money? So, you are shahih, you're desirous of it. And then, الفقر, you have this anxiety and this fear that you might actually become broke one day. That you might lose your money. Everyone has that fear in the back of their mind. That I might be broke one day. You fear poverty. And all of us fear poverty. But the promise of Allah is greater. And then, You have this desire, this hope, that you will live for a very long time. That's why you have a retirement account. That's why you have stock investment. That's why you have this investment. Because why? You tell yourself, 
ta'mulu al-'ayshi. I'm going to live for a very long time. The Prophet he said, when these four emotions build up in the heart, then give for the sake of Allah, because that charity at that moment comes from a place of sacrifice. It comes from a place that is sincere, and it is harder to give when those emotions build up in the heart than when it is a moment of death, or a moment of crisis, or a moment of extreme amount of luxury. When you have all of it, it's easy to give. But when these emotions build up, then give. Because that is the most impactful charity in the sight of Allah. And it is our path to salvation. The charity that we give, the wealth that we spend, it is our means of protection in this world and the hereafter. So for that, my brothers and sisters, you know, during this last year and the year before, I had the privilege of going with Helping Hand international trips. We have local organizations that do impactful work in our community, feeding the hungry, taking care of the orphans, looking after those who are in the most amount of need. And that's the theme of this convention. If we're going to take something home, we want to build a just society so that everyone has the equal access to the things that we think is privilege, they are the right of others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He open our hearts to charity, make us generous from the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al jaza'u min jinsil amal. Allah loves the quality of generosity in His servants. You be generous to the creation of Allah, and Allah will be generous with you. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam at-tasim al-kathira wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.